Remote video podcasts are easy to produce, but they're kind of boring to watch. Everyone is so tired of that standard side-by-side -side Zoom look, but instead, you can create an engaging, dynamic experience using multi-cam editing and a little help from Riverside.fm. With over a million podcasts, anything you can do to cut through the noise is going to help you out. Now, it doesn't mean that by doing all this hard work to produce a multi-cam edit that suddenly hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of people are gonna be watching your video podcast. I mean, that mostly comes down to titles and thumbnails, something I'm admittedly not great at. And uh, also, a little bit of luck, a little bit of algorithm luck. But what it does mean is that the people who are watching are gonna be really engaged. So without further ado, cold foam, cold brew, mocha. So you've made the leap to Riverside.fm to do your remote podcast recordings, and it's a great decision. But the question is, now that you've done that, what do you actually do with all of these raw native recordings, your video and your audio, in order to produce the highest quality, most dynamic, most engaging video podcast possible? In this tutorial, I'm gonna break down my exact process for going from raw files to final produced video podcast. Hey, I'm Brian Miller and welcome to Audio for Content Creators, where we help you sound better and level up for all your content creation needs. When you finish recording in Riverside, you will come here to the recordings panel. You can scroll down and let's say this was the one that we were gonna work with from Hannah Jung here. You can come over and download the WAV file and the constant frame rate for each of you and your guests. For this tutorial, I'm gonna assume that it's simply a two-person podcast, either you with a guest or you with a co-host. You can, of course, take what I'm teaching you today and use it to create something even more dynamic with more guests if you have a panel discussion or two hosts and a guest, whatever. But I use just a host and a guest, so that's what you're getting. And we're gonna make this tutorial super meta. I'm going to be using the conversation I had with Allian Williams of Sound Speeds, one of the wonderful audio-focused YouTubers and a professional boom microphone operator in the, uh, in the film industry. As you can see in Final Cut Pro, I've got both Alan's constant frame rate file and his wave audio file and my constant frame rate and my audio file. The first thing I need to do is sync each of our audios to our videos so I can select both of these files, right click, go to synchronize, and I'm just gonna do something like Brian sync. You'll see that it defaults to the frame rate that is uh, what it was captured in, which in this case is 24p. Hit okay, should sync almost immediately. And we could of course go check that everything's in sync. And because Final Cut's annoying, I do have to come over here to the pan mode and switch it to stereo left right. Otherwise, it will not play back the audio. Thanks Final Cut for being so annoying even in 2021. Let's just make sure that I'm in sync. Actions that make huge ripples. I just I just had a blog recently at the time you and I are recording this that went out. Perfect, everything's good there. Let's do the same with Alan. Select them both. Sync, Alan sync, 24, perfect, hit okay. Should sync immediately. Go over here. Go up to audio, go down to pan mode, stereo left, right, and then I should be able to check this. Temperature was starting to drop, and she took her temperature, we would throw her in the shower. She'd get in the shower and get hot. Okay, that out of context, who knows what he's talking about there. The next thing we're gonna do is come up here to new project, and I'm gonna call this Brian FX. And what I'm gonna do with Brian FX is I'm gonna drag my sync into it. I'm gonna increase the size and increase the audio waveform. And what I'm gonna do with Brian FX is exactly what it sounds like. I'm going to do any of the processing. I'm gonna do any of the processing that I wanna do for both video and for audio. First thing is I'll come down to, I'm gonna come down to my uh, custom preset. This is for my G85 set up as a webcam. I always recommend that you figure out the best settings for your situation and then save them as presets. You're gonna save yourself a lot of time. Drag this on. You can see immediately it looks a little bit better, but of course you always need to tweak it a little bit. So I'm gonna pull up my scopes here, go into the settings, and let's see, the mids are too boosted based on this preset. Bring that down a little bit, maybe pull up the shadows, just brighten it up a little bit. Don't wanna push this around too much. You'll notice I have a vignette 
on. There we go. This might be a little oversaturated. Good. Pull off the saturation just a little bit, but I think do, do, do. Perfect. All right, and now I'm going to process the audio as well. I was sitting at my desk doing an interview with my VSM, uh, my VSM. So as you can see, my VSM7 desk interview, that's this. I'm gonna drag that on. And then I just need to tweak the audio to make sure that everything's good. I usually have to tweak the compressor. That's mostly what I have to do. I've got my denoise. I've got uh, some EQ, uh, which really for me is just taking out a little bit of the nasalness of the, uh, the voice. Uh, I also round things off at 18 kilohertz uh, because I don't find any of that air necessary to a long form podcast. I think it can get a little grading over time. Now in this tutorial, I'm not teaching any of the video processing or audio processing techniques because that's not what this is for. This is for you to learn how to use Riverside's software to produce a really high quality podcast. So if you want to know more about my audio processing, there's a million videos here on the channel. In fact, I have a three part series where I teach you exactly how I process a voice for spoken word. And you can go check that out in the description at the link. And of course, I have my full course audio 101 for content creators, which you can find at audio101.info, which is my comprehensive beginner course, four hours will take you through everything you need to know there. Yeah, man. So uh, so listen, I'm, I was really excited to have you be a part of uh, this year of the pivot. All right. All I was checking for there, just so you know, is I like to do about four decibels of gain reduction um, at the maximum. Uh, and so I was just double checking that, in fact, I was doing about four decibels of gain reduction with my compressor, which you'll see here. Yeah, man. So uh, so listen, I'm, I was really excited to have you be a part of uh, this year of the pivot. Yeah. So sometimes it's down at minus two, sometimes it's down at about five. So, so we're doing around three to four decibels of gain reduction on average, a little bit more, a little bit less, depending. But that is pretty good. Okay. Now that I've done both the video and the audio processing on my uh, on my sync, I'm going to do a compound clip, call it Brian FX, and go. So what I just did is I just wrote the video and the audio processing to a compound clip, which means I can use I can now edit this single clip with the audio and the video kind of already applied, essentially, which is really really useful. It's going to save me some. Uh, some hassles later. And we'll go ahead and do the same for Alan. Alan FX, bring Alan sync into here. Look at that beautiful face. Look at that beautiful face, Alan. And I don't use a preset for my guest, of course, because I would never know what to expect from them. So I'll bring down the, brighten him up a little bit, bring down the shadows. So we have a nice dynamic image. You'll see here that it's, pretty low saturation and our colors are just off a little bit. I think I might need to do a mask to get this more specific. So let's go down here to a mask like this. And yeah, okay. So we'll come back here and make sure that we're pulling everything in that we need to be. And then we can also go to hue saturation and just just boost up the, the skin tones a little bit here. That looks better. And I don't really need a vignette because Alan's got that studio with kind of the darkness, whatever, but I'll just, I'm just gonna do a very gentle vignette here with a large fall off just to pull focus in on his face a little bit. So you'll see with the vignette off, the vignette on, it just pulls our focus in. And this is actually a huge difference here. Uh, I was able to do this with Alan because he was recording at a relatively high quality. Uh, a lot of people using their built-in webcams um, in their laptops or computers at like 720p. I, I really would not want to push colors around like that too much, but I can get away with it with Alan. And likewise, I would not ordinarily push the audio around too much for a guest, especially if they were using like their their uh, iPhones, uh, earbud things, you know, or their computer, their laptops, like built in microphone, but I know Alan was using <laughs> was using something reasonably good. So I can go ahead and uh, I'm actually he was using a very similar situation to me. Plus, he's in a sound booth. So I can probably put my preset on him and then just um, tweak up the EQ and the compression a little bit. You would think that a boom operator is a 
honest truth of it is that a boom operator, I and mean, you could easily say the sound mixer is the recordist. I need to also make sure that the signal to noise ratio is at its very highest. So that way, quiet of an environment is possible. I I have to make sure that that's done. So that's a big part of what I do. Let's move everything into a deeper freezer if that's possible. That way we can shut down. In case you care, um, I did very different compression on Allen than I normally do on mine. I made it really, I, I adjusted the compression so it only catches the really sharp, really heavy transients. Um, I just wanted to catch the stuff that really got through because I think he was using a compressor. Um, if, you, if you actually look at the waveform, uh, the waveform of Alan's entire uh, recording is pretty even. So I think he had a compressor on uh, when he was recording, which is something that almost nobody ever does, obviously. Uh, so yeah, if you if you look at it as it's building the thumbnail here, it's it was, it, was, it was pretty compressed to begin with. So I really just wanted to make sure I engaged the compressor, uh, my compressor in post to catch the extra transients that just jumped out of nowhere. And for his voice, I found a little bit in the low mids that was a little honky, a um, little squeaky. And then I found something in the two to three kilohertz range, which was like really aggressive in the sibilant range uh, for him. So we uh, we took that out. Now I can go compound clip on FX, good. So what we have now is we have Brian FX and Alan FX. I'm going to go make another new project. I'm going to call this combined. And this is where I'm going to create the third angle because I've got my angle and Alan's angle, but I want a third angle to be able to cut between when I'm doing the actual editing of the episode. You'll find that having three distinct angles makes your editing much, much easier, especially when you need to cut out in the middle of a passage, in the middle of a phrase. There's just you or your guest uh, rambled on, made a point, and then kept talking, and you you want to get rid of that in the edit to tighten up the episode. If you only have the two angles, it's really hard sometimes to make that happen uh, because you would have to cut away to them just quietly listening to you in order to cover up the edit out of, you know, if I cut out the middle of something I was saying, but I was going to keep saying it, on YouTube, we just do a jump cut, nobody cares. But here, it's supposed to look like a natural conversation in a video podcast. So if I wanted to notch out the middle of like, a, if, I, if I said three sentences in a row and I wanted to cut out the middle one, but just have my first sentence immediately go to my third sentence, I would have to, with only two angles, cut to Alan for a few seconds and then cut back to me. And it would just be him listening like that, which is not that interesting. So by being able to cut to a an angle where it's the two of us split screen, it gives me another option because I can cut from that first sentence to the split screen of us, which is now my third sentence, and then back to me. And that keeps everything rolling. You'll see what I mean as uh, as we go through here. Here we are, and I've got my combined. So I'm going to bring my FX and Alan's FX. And at this point, I want to make sure that we are synced up completely. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to move move Alan to the side because I'm going to create a split screen, and then trim right to the middle and move me to the side. And now this looks a little awkward because he's so much bigger than me. So I'm going to increase my scale just to match roughly our eye lines for the split screen. That's uh, a little bit too much. I think I, I think I went overboard on the scale there. That looks about right. Now we look like normal humans talking to each other. Okay. Do, 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 do. I need to find a spot where I can tell if he and I are perfectly in sync. Production, and uh, I'm the boom operator, so. Sound! <laughs> yeah, okay, I think that delayed reaction for me probably was not actually that delayed, so let's see if this works. It's his uh, Warner Brothers production, and uh, I'm the boom operator, so. Sound! <laughs> Sound, yes. Okay, I think I've got us in sync, but whenever I do syncs at the uh, beginning, I always shift all the way over to the end. And the reason I'm making sure that I get these two perfectly in sync is because this, these combined, uh, this combined track here is gonna form the actual episode. It's gonna, it's gonna form the audio for the entire episode. So I wanna make sure that it's absolutely perfectly in sync. 
before I com actually combine these two into a single track that I'm going to work with as my third angle, I need to make sure that my level and Alan's level are roughly the same. So what I'm going to be watching for is over here, uh, which of course you can't see because my... So I'm going to be looking down here in the bottom right and just watching for kind of average, average level of him and then average level of me and matching those. Communicate, I try to help people. As soon as I was able to to leave and, and, and the ha we weren't under quarantine anymore. All right, so he's kind of around minus 13 in terms of your primary primary work but but I know you you didn't just sit and do nothing until October you there wasn't any film to yeah okay we're pretty much around the same same spot and now I can combine these two into a clip I'm gonna call combined okay now we have <laughs> what that was weird how did I say that now we've got the Brian FX Allen FX and combined I have three angles that I'm going to select and turn into a multi cam clip and I'm going to say use audio for synchronization this is really important because I shifted around our audio uh, uh, just a little bit I shifted us around in time just a little bit let's just go to custom settings and make sure that everything is right 24p 1080 uh, 1080p and yes 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 okay it is at this point as you start to hear in the background my computer's fan turning on that I'm going to need to take a quick break because it'll take a few minutes uh, maybe 10 minutes for the multi-cam clip to assemble here that's because I said to do it by uh, to do it by audio to sync by audio which means the the program final cuts got to go through the audio of all three and make sure it's all aligned for the full 42 minutes of each of those three uh, those three clips so it's gonna do that and once that's done then I need to transcode the uh, the multi file so that I'm able to edit easier because having all three of those clips combined into a multi is very processor heavy and even though I have a very new very very good computer very very good processor um, I still want to create a smaller clip for the editing uh, just to make sure everything runs smooth and that I don't have that pinwheel of death going the entire time that I'm editing. So I'm going to transcode the clip after it creates the multi-clip and then I will see you back now. It's the very next day and everything has finished here in Final Cut. We've got a multi-clip that has been transcoded, which you can see right here. So I'm going to rename each of these just simply. So Alan, Brian, and Combined. I'm going to bring myself up to the top. This is just a preference for how I edit uh, videos. And so I've got Brian, then Alan, then combined. Perfect. And everything should be in sync. Now I'm going to make a new project. Call it Draft 1. And inside Draft 1, hello, Pinwheel of Death, why are you here? Inside Draft 1, I'm just going to drag my multi into the project. And now I'm going to right-click switch the video angle to combined, switch the audio to combined, and the audio is going to stay on combined for the entire edit. I'm never going to change the audio. At this point, I can bring up my angles so I can always see all three angles at any given time, and I am now ready to begin editing because all I'm going to do is shift which video angle I'm using throughout the edit as I need to, either for creative purposes, for keeping people's attention, or to cover up any cuts that I need to do. So let's make this nice and big. Make sure our, our waveform is nice and big. And then I'm gonna zoom in so that I can find the obvious places to cut. And I assume this is probably where I begin. All right, Alan, thank you so much for being here. It's good to see you again, by the way. Uh, it's great to see you as always. So that is the beginning of the conversation. I'm just going to cut here, delete that. What I want to do for you now is very, very simply, I'm just going to show you about a minute or two of actual editing, how I use the different angles to cut between them, how I use the multicam clip, and that's it. I'm not going to take you through the entire 45-minute edit. That's going to take me probably two to three hours to do. All right, Alan, thank you so much for being here. It's good to see you again, by the way. Uh, it's great to see you as always. Now you see that it already started kind of 
uh, getting a little janky as we are going, that's because I'm still in optimized or original mode. I'm gonna switch to proxy only, and that, you see that the, the quality goes down here because the proxy is 50% quality, but it's going to make the editing smoother, so it should hopefully not uh, jam up as much while I'm going through the edit. Very few people will have any access to, in, even in their imagination. So you see how Alan, while I'm doing this preamble, is looking down. This is something that a lot of guests do uh, because they're thinking, maybe they're taking notes, maybe they're writing down the question that you're asking or whatever they're doing. And you don't, this is boring to look at and it makes him look like he's not interested. Even though he is, he's listening or he's taking notes or whatever. This is very common. So that's why I'm gonna shift now, right as he kind of starts right about here. You can see him shift his focus downwards. So right before he shifts his focus, I'm gonna make a cut right in between, and I'm gonna switch the video angle to me. Yeah, man, so uh, so listen, I'm, I was really excited to have you be a part of uh, this Year of the Pivot project because you have gone through something that, of course, if I wanted to, I could cut out that uh by switching from the combined view right here part of this year of the pivot project because you have gone through something that very few people will have any access to in even in their imagination they can't imagine how many people in certain industries now right here do you see that as i start to make this point that alan up here watch alan up here he starts nodding right there i like to show when the guest is nodding along with me or when I'm nodding along with them because it's kind of like a laugh track in a sitcom. It, it lets the viewer who's watching this conversation know that the two of us are on the same page, that we're building energy, that we're creating connection, and it helps them feel more connected. So I'm gonna shift back to the combined view right as Alan starts doing that. This is a choice of shifting uh, for, for tone of the conversation, not for making a, a cut or hiding a cut. Completely wiped out and in many ways are still really struggling. Uh, so before we get into kind of what you do in your background and all of that, what are you working on right now? Like this week, this weekend, what's on your plate? I'm working on a television show for season of Black Lightning. All right. So I'm going to cut to Alan now so that we get him kind of in the spotlight. Of Black Lightning. It's his uh, Warner Brothers production. And uh, I'm the boom operator, so sound. Now, I want to cut because you see I start laughing here, but I don't start laughing until this right here is where you see the, the action of laughing start. So he goes sound, and then I'm going to wait to cut until about there. I'm going to cut back to me. Sound. <laughs> sound yes uh so that's cool so you're working on a warner brothers uh production I am. Do, do, that's it I, that's all i'm going to show you right now and i'm going to play from the beginning so you can see how much more dynamic this edit is than simply leaving both screens up permanently the way you would normally see in a in a zoom recording where you just see both people all the time or where people leave Zoom on the spotlight mode and so it just automatic, or the speaker mode rather, so it automatically shifts back and forth. It never quite does it well and it's a little, when two people try to talk over each other, it kind of jumps back and forth. Here I have all the control to choose what you see, which influences how you feel about the conversation. So this is what I mean when I say my voice is in the edit. This is why I don't like handing off editing of my podcast. I'm, it's one of the only things I'm not gonna shop off to a virtual assistant or an editor because I believe that my choice of when I make these edits, what to leave in, what to leave out, when to cut to who, when to cut to a reaction or not, uh, when I'm gonna leave a long pause in versus cut a pause out, all of that makes a huge difference on the, uh, the, the way that the audience perceives the conversation. All right, Alan, thank you so much for being here. It's good to see you again, by the way. Uh, it's great to see you as always. Yeah, man. So, uh, so listen, I'm, I was really excited to have you be a part of uh, this Year of the Pivot project because you have gone through something that very few people will have any access to in, even in their imagination. They can't imagine how many people in certain industries, particularly the entertainment industry, were just completely wiped out 
and in many ways are still really struggling. Uh, so before we get into kind of what you do in your background and all of that, what are you working on right now? Like this week, this weekend, what's on your plate? I'm working on a television show for season of Black Lightning. It's is a Warner Brothers production and uh, I'm the boom operator. So sound. <laughs> sound. Yes. Uh, so that's cool. So you're working on a Warner Brothers uh, production. I am. Do, do you work with you've mentioned them before? Do you work with them a lot? And that's pretty much the process that I go through. Now, we're not even close to done with this. I have to do this process for the entire 45 minute conversation. Then I need to film the introduction, put that in here, make that nice and edit that. I need to take an excerpt from somewhere in the conversation with Alan, something that he said that sounds really interesting or intriguing and put it at the beginning as a cold open. I need to put the intro card, the Riverside uh, sponsor card. I need to put the little end thing. I need to put some extra music in here. Then it needs to get finalized and normalized. And But that's not the point of this video, right? That's the entire rest of the process. But what I really wanted you to see was how you can use what Riverside it's giving you the high quality audio and video to make a video podcast that is so much more dynamic and interesting visually than simply switching back and forth between two people or even worse, just putting the side by side up and leaving it static for the entire time. This is so much more engaging. It's so much more interesting to watch. But what do you want to know about working with Riverside? Are there more questions you have, different topics I haven't covered regarding Riverside's software or service? Go ahead, let me know in the comments down below and I'll see if I can get to those in future videos. And of course, if you wanna hear my full conversation with Alan that you saw here, it's a fantastic. And you can go get that at the link in the description or in the top pinned comment that I've got below this video. Plus check out Alan's YouTube channel, Sound Speeds. It's super nerdy, super technical, and you're gonna love it. That link is also in the description down below. I feel like the whole world's in the description down below. You know, that'd be a good name for a book for a YouTuber in the description down below. Anyway, thanks so much for stopping by to audio for content creators. Come back anytime to sound better and level up, and we'll see you soon.